Hi viewers, welcome to the channel and to another video on 3D exercise. In this video, we'll be designing the 3D exercise 102. At no moment, we'll use the part design or paint to design this model. So, I hope you like this video. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you want to support the content of the channel, there's a link in the description of this video to my Core 5 page. Thank you. Now, let's see how to design this model using the part draft, sketcher, and fastness of paint. Let's go. First, you need a new document. Just click on this icon to create a new document. And now change the document to sketcher and go to our drawing page. As you can see, here we have these all views and missions. So, we'll use this all to create the, the part. Okay. So the first thing that we'll do is to create a sketch and we'll show the session of the session view here. Let's do that. Go to FreeCut and now to create a sketch. Let's select YZ plane for this first sketch. Select this option and OK. And now we go to Sketch Jumps of Sketch our Workbench and we select Polline tool and we'll start our sketch in this origin point. Draw the sketch. Okay, now that we have this sketch here, skip and let's add the dimensions. First, let's select vertical distance tool. For this line here, we'll set the half of 22 millimeters, this dimension here, so it will be 11. And this point to this origin point, we'll set the half of 25 millimeters, 12.5 millimeters. And this line here, We'll set off of 15, will be 7.5. Click on this icon and hide all. And now select horizontal distance tool. For this horizontal line here, we'll set 2 millimeters. As you can see here, this distance, let's set 2. And for this line here, we'll set 26 millimeters. And this line here, as you can see, is 41 millimeters. Let's set the distance and OK. As you can see, this sketch is full constrained. Now, just close this and press home. The next thing that we'll do is to create a revolution of this sketch. To do that, we need to go to the part of bench. So click here and select part of bench. And now you select this sketch and now revolve tool. Okay, now if we go to the revolution axis and here in the durations, as you can see, we have one in the Z duration. So it means that the revolution will be created in the Z axis. We need to change here to Y axis. So what you do is to set one here and zero in the Z duration. And now just click OK and we have our revolution in the correct way. OK, select this circular edge and then control this edge here and now jump for two. And here in this task panel, we need to go to the length and change the size here to 2 millimeters and OK. OK, the next thing to do is to create this part here. To create this part, we need to create a sketch first in which you uh, draw this geometry here. OK, so let's do that. Let's change here to sketch uh, workbench. And now just select this face here and create a sketch. Plain face, no problem. OK. And next, you go to Sketch Drums and you select this tool here. And now we draw this geometry here in the region point. And we select Constrain Vertical and we set this line vertical. Okay. Now we have one degree of freedom. What we do, we select this tool here. And now these two endpoints. And we set this length here 18. And now skip two times and we have this. Okay, the next thing that we'll do is to create an extrusion of this sketch. To do that, we need to move to the part work bench. And we use this tool here, extrude tool. And also we need to change the length here to, as you can see, we have 12 here. So we need to change here to 12 and enter. Now we have this, as you can see. Let's reverse the duration of this extrusion. First, let's say this extrude and Scroll down here and go to reverse it. And here we need to set true and enter. Now we have this. And the next thing to do is to set correct placement of this part here. To do that, we can use the transformation tool. Select this operation, right click on mouse and select transform tool. 
okay and we'll change the translation increment here let's add 4 plus 15 plus 5 millimeters okay and press on and now just move this arrow in this way and now we have this now click ok and now that we have this part here and the correct placement let's create this chamfer here to do that we'll create a sketch click here and select sketcher and next click here in this icon and we need to select yz plane this option and ok and now let's use external jump tool to extract this edge and this edge okay next we select polling tool and what to do with this tool is to draw a triangle click here and in this endpoint and now draw this horizontal line and now click here and do the same here Okay, and next we need to select all horizontal and vertical lines of this sketch and set equal. Select this line, this line here, and these two lines, and now set equal constraint. And next select constraint distance and click in this horizontal line. And next set the uh, chamfer size, one millimeters, and okay. And now escape two times and go to the part of bench. And now what we do with this sketch here, we create a revolution, select the sketch and now revolution tool. And as you can see, we need to change the revolution axis to the Y axis. So let's add one here for the Y duration and zero for the Z duration and OK. The next thing to do is to subtract this revolution from this extrude. OK, to do that, we need to select this extrude first and then control select this revolve and now cut to and we have this. OK, next, let's fuse these two parts here. Just select these two parts in this way and now union tool and we have this. OK, now let's create this 3D rod here. To do that, we need to move to the fasteners workbench. Just click here and select fasteners. And here we'll create two 3 dead roots. The first 3 dead root for this part here and another one for this 3 dead hole. Okay, so let's click here two times in this merge 3 dead root. Okay, and now just press home and rotate this model. Double click in this first 3 dead root and move it to here. And okay, as you can see, we have these two objects here. So let's change the parameters of this first 3D root and then place this object here. Select this first 3D root, scroll down, and the first thing that will change will be the diameter. Just click here and select M20. Click here and select M20, this reference. And now let's change the length here to 15, as you can see. Let's add 15 here. And also, let's make the thread visible. Just click here and set true, enter, and we have this. And now select this thread drill again, and now control select the circular edge, and click in this icon to place this thread drill. So just select this thread drill and scroll down to offset. Here will set four plus fifteen and enter, and now we have this. Now we have this object in the correct placement okay next let's change the parameters of this 3d root select this 3d root here and the download here as you can see 20. so let's click here and select this reference and next we need to set the length 25 millimeters click here and set 25 and now scroll down let's change this type here to square tip this option and now let's make the thread visible set through here and enter and we have this select the thread root and now the circular edge and now this icon and we have this okay now let's see the offset here and the string pitch as you can see we have this one millimeter so what you'll do is to go to the offset of this thread root and change to one 
no here must be minus one millimeters and we have this press home and change your bench to hard rock bench and the first thing that we'll do is to fuse this 3d root with this fusion control so like this fusion and union tool okay now we have this next let's create a cylinder here to create a hole just click here and let's change the parameters of this cylinder the radius here the radius here will be the half of 20 let's add 10 here and the height will be one millimeters this mission let's change here to one and next let's attach the cylinder in this face here just click here two times in these three dots and now just select this face and scroll down and let's change the duration of this cylinder check this option and scroll up and ok now we have this now we need to select this cylinder and this 3d root and now the union tool ok and next you need to create another cylinder to create this hole so just click on this icon again and now select the cylinder and let's change the radius here to 4 millimeters the half of 80 let's add 4 okay and the height here we can set 100 no problem okay and the next thing to do is to attach the cylinder in this face so we click here two times and we select this face and also we need to reverse this so we check this option and scroll up and okay okay now press home select this part here and hide and next we select this part that is visible and union tool okay and now we make this vision visible okay now that you have these two parts here what you'll do is subtract this part from this part here so first we select this part and now control select this part and now cut tool and we have this we have this treated hole and okay and the next thing to do is to create this neural surface here to do that we'll create a sketch here in this face that we'll use as a profile and then we'll create two helix objects okay so first let's move to the sketch or workbench and then select this face here and create a sketch burn face okay and next we select the polyline tool and with this tool here we'll draw a triangle and this vertical axis in this way next select equal constraint and make these two lines equal and now we need to make these two lines here perpendicular as you can see we have this angle 90 degrees we can select perpendicular constraint and make these two lines perpendicular okay and next you can set this distance here just select constraint distance tool and now this end point and this origin point and set 11 0.5 okay and for this one here let's add 2.5 and now skip two times and we have this next let's move to the part workbench okay and here we'll go to create primitives just click in this icon and from here let's select helix tool and now let's change the pitch here to 200 and the height will be 28 as you can see and right here we can set 11.5 no problem okay now we have this and now just click in this icon create and now close this okay now we have this and the next thing to do is to change the rotation axis of this helix to do that we'll use the transformation tool just select this helix and click on mouse and select transform tool okay and now let's move to and now let's change to the right view and as you can see the region of this helix is here we need to rotate this helix 90 degrees so we'll change here to 90 and then rotate this in the x-axis and now we have this just click ok 
And the next thing to do is to create a copy of this helix, control C and now control V to pass the helix. And now select this last helix and change the local coordinate to left handed. Okay, now if we hide this part here, we can see that we have these two helix. What we'll do next is to create a part using this profile and these two parts here, these two helix. Okay, so first we'll click here in Sweep 2 and then we select this LED sketch, this profile and we'll check these two options, create salt and frame it and now what you need to do is to select this helix and then OK. And as you can see we have our first part. Let's hide this helix, select this helix and spacebar. OK, let's click here again and select this LED sketch and check these two options and now we select this helix and OK now we have two parts here OK let's hide this sketch and also this helix spacebar and now let's create the union of these two parts here let's select this sweep and now this operation here and union and now we have this Let's make this card visible, spacebar. As you can see here, we have these two parts and this part here, we need to create a polar array of this part. To do that, we will need to move to the draft workbench here and the part workbench, we don't have that possibility. Okay, so we'll change here the workbench to the draft workbench. And first we can hide this grid, just click in this icon. And next, select this part here and click here and select polar array and now we go to the, this task panel and here we'll start with two elements and now and these points here the center of rotation must be zero click ok as you can see here we have this polar array we have these two items we need to change the rotation axis of this array so select this array, scroll down, go to axis, scroll down again, and we need to set one for the y axis and zero for the z axis. And now if we rotate this model, we can see that the rotation axis is now correct. Okay, and now we can change the number of elements. Just select this array, go to number polar, and here need to be 22 occurrence. So we'll set 22 here and enter. Okay, as you can see now we have this. And now let's move to the part workbench. What you'll do in this workbench is to subtract this array from this part here. Let's do that. First select this cut and now control this array and now cut to. And as you can see, now we have our final model. We finished the design of this model, as you can see. So thank you for watching this video. If you find this long video useful, please leave a like, a comment, and share this video with your friends. Again, if you want to support the content of this channel, there's a link in the description of this video to my Ko-Fi page. Thank you. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.